Hello, I'm Tita Suess from the University of Vienna. Within the next five minutes, I want to show you the most exciting theories of the special theory of relativity. Let's first go back in time to the year 1638, where the famous Galileo Galilei formulated his Galilean transformation. This will be the basis of Newton physics. By the way, Isaac Newton was just born four years after this uh, transformation was formulated. Let's first locate Galileo Galilei in the center of a train car and he will emit a light burst. You will see that the light burst hits the front of the train and the back of the train exactly the same time. And he will observe exactly the same simultaneity from the train station. If a light burst is again emitted, it will hit the front of the train and the back of the train exactly the same time. There is absolute time and absolute simultaneity. This is the basic of Newton physics. But now let's move to the amazing Albert Einstein and the year 1905. We locate Albert Einstein to a frame of reference. A frame of reference is a reference frame in which a body at rest remains at rest. For example, a spaceship in outer space which travels with constant velocity is a frame of reference. If Albert Einstein emits a light burst, he will observe exactly the same as Galileo Galilei. The light burst will hit the front of the train and the back at the same time. But Einstein postulated an amazing thing. He postulated that light is always propagating in empty space with a definite velocity. And this is independent of the state of the motion of the emitting body. And this is now the central point of the theory of relativity. Because if Albert Einstein is now located at the train station and he again looks at the emission of a light burst in the center of a wagon, he will see the following. The light will first hit the back of the train car and then the front of the train. And this has amazing consequences. Albert Einstein stated that there is no absolute time and no absolute simultaneity. This is completely a new concept far beyond Newton's physics where it was thought that every point in space you can define an absolute time. To illustrate it, let's look at this famous light clock. What is a light clock? Let's think of a light clock the clock which emits uh, a light source and every time this light re is repelled by the boundary of the clock we count one tick of the clock but what is going to happen if this light clock is going to move obviously if the clock is moving the light has to travel a longer distance but you know even if the clock is moving the light can't move faster than the speed of light even though it's traveling now on this diagonal path. So it obviously has to take a longer time until the light hits the boundary of the clock and so the ticking is slower than the moving clock. And this is a famous time dilatation and opens the door of time travel and that the time is not absolute. And this was indeed experimentally validated in October 1971 by Joseph Haverle and Richard Keating. They flew two times around the world, one time westward and one time eastward. And they bought three business class tickets. Two business class tickets for himself and one business class ticket for Mr. Clark. And Mr. Clark was a cesium beam atomic clock and they located this atomic clock just on the business class seat of a commercial airliner. 
Now let's try to understand what we will observe. We have to observe this experiment from a frame of reference. For example, a fixed star. Now let's first look at the clock that remains on Earth. From our frame of reference, a fixed star, the clock is still moving because the Earth is rotating. So it is a moving clock. A clock, which is an, the airplane which uh, flies eastward, will move much slower. And in this extreme case, where the uh, flight speed is exactly the same as the speed of the equator, it's not moving at all for our frame of reference of a fixed star. So this time will tick faster than the clock which remains on Earth. If we now look at the clock on the airplane which, which flies westward, so in the direction of the rotation of the Earth, this clock is moving the fastest. So the clock on this airplane will tick the slowest. Half-length heating compared the atomic clocks of the westward flight and the eastward flight after uh, the airplane landed and they observed exactly what they expected. A time delay and time difference between the westward flying clock and the eastward flying clock of about 0.3 microseconds. But the time dilation is not just a tiny effect which is not important for real life. It is used in every day's life. If the theory of relativity is not considered correctly in GPS system, the GPS system would fail its navigational function within about two minutes. If you want to know more about theory of relativity and electromagnetism, just attend our lecture Physics 2 at the University of Vienna.